everyone in this three questions was Joel McLean. There, I got it right. Yeah, right. you did. All right, all right. Joel McLean. Love that music. So, so Joel, it, Joel, it's so good to see you. Uh, we mm -hmm. we have known each other for quite a while, at, yeah. right? Like we've met, we've you know connected in Ontario several times. So. I know you do amazing work and I, I'm excited to have you today. So thanks. Like, thanks for being here. Well, thanks for, for the invite. Uh, you know, when I got the email, I was excited, of course, but it's always great to connect with you because like you said, it had been a while. We met way, Hi. way back at a conference. Um, I, I think it was in, uh, in the States somewhere. I had gone and, and attended that right. conference. I don't even remember which one, but I got a picture of you way back then of, of us together right. or somewhere in my Facebook account. But um, yeah, so we've, with the short haired George, not the hippie George. Or the not beard, the hippie, right? it was the, the short haired George. Yeah, the short haired right. one. And uh, yeah, so since then, you know, here and there connected, I, I, we'd shoot, shoot off some messages on, on yeah. Twitter, you know, especially as well. But so it's nice to connect with you again, especially, you know, I following you on your journey, your weight loss journey. And of course, your journey uh, getting out of the school system and, and getting into, yeah. you know, the, the beautiful work that you do. So anytime I have a chance to connect with, yeah, no. people like you know a person like you george is is a, an opportunity for me to grow yeah, so thanks I actually, for having me so i actually remember um i remember connecting with you one conference and i just remember spending a lot of time with you and just how much i appreciated you so i was excited <laughs> I, was, I, I actually do remember it was actually um a principal event in ontario i remember it very distinctly and just connected with you so I, i'm really glad that we can sit down and chat and hopefully you're yeah cross -cross in person so before like so we could talk about that stuff forever. We will. We're gonna, we will. We're, gonna, we're gonna record a podcast here. So, you you do some really amazing stuff in leadership. I know that yep. you said you're you actually taught chemistry, right? Yeah, yeah. I was actually was, uh, chemistry. Which, yeah. I would actually. We should do like a podcast series, like teach George chemistry, and if you can actually <laughs> get me to understand chemistry, you, you would like be like the best teacher of all time, right? Yeah. Like, or, or at least do all the cool stuff. Do, <laughs> right, right. Right. Okay. All right. So you think about your experience as an educator, as a teacher, who is a teacher, like, you know, whether it's a student, whether it's a colleague that someone really inspired you and why? Yeah. Well, there's, there's a lot of them. Uh, if I go back to high school, because that's a, an experience, you know, that's a, an inspiration that actually, you know, brought me along the path of wanting to be, you know, either a professional hockey player, or if not, it was going to be a, a school teacher. Right. So mm -hmm. it's my, my, my high school chemistry, a science teacher, and his name was, Richard Poirier. So we're going to get you to practice your French names. Or so, Poirier. so Richard, yeah, Poirier. Poirier? Yeah, Poirier. Okay, all right. <laughs> anyway, so this, you know, this was my high school teacher. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, he was inspiring because I would, I would, you know, be in his class and just the way he would engage us. And it was especially, you know, the relationship part. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it back then. You know, I'm, I'm a, you know, I was a student and, of course, going through, you know, the, the life experience that I did and, and, and discovering leadership and the importance mm -hmm. of relationships and developing that connection with your students. Now I understand what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So not knowingly, you know, that influenced me in a sense where that's the type of connection that, that I wanted as a person, even as a, uh, you know, a 17, 16, 15 year old, uh, just being in that class, it just felt right. You know, in the way that he would talk to us, the way that he would address us, the way he would ask us questions, get us to discover things. It was it was obvious that it was about the relationship first with each student, mm -hmm. and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to, I just knew right then and there. You know, uh, I was doing some tutoring as well, a little bit, and I and I was a hockey player. You know, playing AAA hockey, and so it was a busy schedule. But just seeing him doing what he did and the love that I had for chemistry, it's like that's what I want to do. You know, I want to connect wow. with people like that because it brought a, a sense of uh, accomplishment and a sense of fulfillment. Right. N you know, looking back now, knowing that, that that's what it was. Mm -hmm. So just the connections and it wasn't the only one. There's, you know, there's a whole bunch of us that, you know, he was our favorite teacher. And, and just because of that, not because he let us do what we wanted to do, not it was fun. It was engaging, but it's because he came in and got us and he developed that relationship first with us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that just inspired me to want to, to want to go into education and, and, you know, eventually do what I want to do. Cause if I hadn't crossed him in my path right. during my life, right. I pr probably wouldn't be where I am today. All right. Well, we got to give a big shout out. Oh. Big yeah. Shout out. Shout well, out. So, so it's funny. Cause I actually, I joke, like I, I do struggle with science. <laughs> like it was like by far my hardest subject. Right. Yeah. And like, as I'm listening to you, one of the things I, 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 I don't, I don't like, I, I don't like talking negatively. This is probably, and I'm maybe, I don't know if I am. I feel that 
one of the reasons I struggled in science is that I had brilliant science teachers who didn't necessarily do that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, in the classrooms where we struggle the most is where the relationship is most needed. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So like, mm -hmm. it, like it just, things just didn't click for me in that the area. And I, so let's flip this around. I actually remember, uh, Shelly Murph. She was my biology teacher. Okay. And she was so good at relationships and, and to be honest, I don't know if I did any better, but I didn't feel as dumb in her class, if that made yeah. sense. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh, absolutely. You know, like she was absolutely, she was incredible. I actually, weirdly enough, I still talk to her. Um, we, like I've connected with her um, several times. I just remember that, how much of a difference that made because in the other classrooms where I really struggled with the content, was I a nuisance? Oh, was I terrible? Because the first thing, the last thing I wanted you to think was I was dumb. So I'm going to get rid of that I'm yeah. gonna, just because I know I struggle with it. So I'm going to be the class clown, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't Absolutely. seem to have the same disruptive behaviors in, in, in Shelly Murray's class, right? Yeah. Because she, it was just that welcome feeling. And she was also, she was brilliant in science, right? So that does, that is kind of an important aspect of it. It's not an either or, it's both. Yeah. So well, at least she had that. But 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 again, coming back to the, the, the relationship piece. Right. I've known teachers throughout my career as a, you know, as colleagues and, and as uh, teachers that work for me as a principal. I've also known teachers that were put into situations where they had to teach completely outside of their comfort right. zone. And they were brilliant because even though they weren't maybe the most. Uh, right you know, they, they didn't know the most about the subject. They were able to make those connections and have fun with it. And still, uh, you know, make sure that the students progress in it. So, and same goes for the adults, right? As a leader, totally. when I look at the relationships that we have with either teachers or my colleagues, well, usually the relationship will be, a, you know, a reflection of um, the type of relationship that I was able to to develop with that person, right? Or that level of relationship that I have with that person. So if we can get that connection and, and develop within ourselves, the means to be able to connect with people, even the ones that we have, a heart, we're not going to connect with everybody hundred percent. Right. Like right. It's some will connect more than others and yeah. less and, and things can happen too. you know, stuff can happen and it could cause friction and whatnot. But, you know, as leaders and as teachers and as principals, uh, you know, we've got to put our, our best foot forward and, and say, at least, you know, when it comes to a situation where somebody doesn't have their door open to want to welcome mm -hmm. that, well, at least we let them know that the door is always open. And when you're ready, you can cross that you know that that doorway but you know we're willing to to go uh, and uh, all the way and, and develop that relationship but that's that's the difference maker right there george it's it's the relationship well piece. it's probably it's 100%. probably like my my you know thinking about myself as a teacher right like i always was good at relationships but basically anything I, over grade three i struggle with the right so, <laughs> right so <laughs> love it there you go there you go all right so now you are currently it's the equivalent like it, is it called district principal? Yeah, it's like a district principal, but it's right. uh, it, it's like more uh, the official title in English, if I were to translate it, is school yeah. efficacy leader. So it's like a district right. principal, and I've got a team of teachers that go into schools and provide training and, and okay. accompaniment and stuff like that. Yeah. And one of the one of the things that we talked about before we recorded the podcast was really kind of working with leaders too, and how crucial right. they are. And so I know that you've not only been a school principal, and now you're working with them, uh, you know, distinctively both in your district and with people outside. So like when you think of like the really inspiring leaders who you worked with, who's someone that sticks out and why? Oh, there's a lot, you know, throughout the years, there's a lot. Um, if I go way back in elementary school, I'd say one of the first ones that had an impact on me, her name was uh, Denise Racine. <laughs> I'll get you to practice that. Denise Racine, Racine, like root, root in French, but Racine, right? So Denise okay. Racine, uh, I will never forget uh, that woman. She's a just a fantastic, fantastic woman. We need to give her a shout out after for sure. Oh, it's, oh! Do you hey, say you say the word. as soon as you say a word? I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I'll give her a preemptive oh. shout out. Yeah. And again, when I think about uh, about Madame Racine, about Denise Racine, is it was her ability to be able to connect. And as a principal, she she just kept because I, I I knew her as a teacher as well. I had mm. I had had her as a teacher, and then. Uh, I knew her as a principal and it was just the same thing. And, but, you, but she connected not in a way where you're too buddy, buddy, because you know? right. some people have a hard time with that line, right? This you become yeah. too buddy, buddy, you know, you had that ultimate respect, but you loved her. Mm -hmm. Like you just loved her. You wanted to hug her, but you did not mess with her. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Not because you were afraid 
of what she would do to you or, or the consequence, you were afraid to disappoint her. Right. It was totally that. And she was a proud woman, always walked with her, you know, squared shoulders. And and she just embodied that confidence, but also that empathy to be able to connect and 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 develop those relationships. And that just made her so good at her job and made her, you know, just attracted people to her all the time. Mm -hmm. So she had a lot of success and I still talk about her today and I still want to see her. I know she's still, uh, she's still around. She's still back where I came from and I'd love to connect with her again for sure. But, uh, well, you know, here's this podcast. I mean, well, you know, I'll shoot it out to her on Facebook. She must be on Facebook. Everybody's on Facebook from, <laughs> right. from that generation on to right, probably right. mine so a little bit there, you know, but, uh, so I think of her and, you know, if I think of an administrator, um, more recently and a colleague, you know, I can talk about a colleague of mine that uh, I work with. He was, I was in, in a building and it was grade seven to 12 and we had a lot of students. So the way it was organized is that there was a principal for the grade seven and eight. So only we had about 200 students in grade mm -hmm. seven and eight here in North Bay and nine to 12, right? was the same. So we had a principal for nine, 12 and the principal there, his name is, is Lucien Chapu. And uh, I got to give him a shout out too, because Lucien, <laughs> yes. Again, here we have an individual that understands the importance and the power of that relationship piece. Mm -hmm. And everybody loved him and respected him at the same time, you know, didn't want to mess with him because they didn't want to disappoint. And, and, and he just mastered that, you know, right. and, and just to see him day in and day out working with, especially the students that were harder to connect with students with substance abuse, families that are, uh, you know, in, in need and the empathy that he would put out there and just to, to watch him work those relationships right. because he knew that it was, you know, short-term investment, long-term gain. Right. So he would establish those relationships with the families and the students. And because of the work he had put into there, it would pay off in the long run whenever, you know, something would happen or he'd have to straighten a student out or have a, a discussion with them or even staff. It was the same thing. Mm -hmm. So to see it, so a lot of similarities between him and his style, and, you know, Madame Denise Racine way back when I was in elementary school and they just, they just mastered that craft, but it's because they understood the power and the importance of the relationship. Well, they, you know, when you were talking about this, I actually, this is a story I've never told. I don't think I've ever told this. Uh, I had a, my superintendent, her name was Marilyn Campbell and yep. she was, she had high expectations. And I think, you know, a lot, a lot of people, um, maybe even struggled with her a little bit because she had high expectations. She would, you know, she pushed you and she challenged you and I respected her so much. I still do. Yeah. Um, she did some incredible work and she like, I just, you know, I, I, same thing. I did not want to disappoint her ever. Yeah. And I, I was a vice principal. I'll never forget this. I was a vice principal and she's like, Hey, I need to see you in my office tomorrow morning. I'm like, this is the, I'm getting a principal job. Like I, this is, so I'm ner I cannot sleep. Right. Okay. I'm so nervous about this. Yeah. So I talked to my principal. I said, I, I think I'm getting a principal job. Like this is, you know, a big deal. And, uh, and so I'm like, it's about a 30 minute drive from where I live Okay. and about 20 minutes into this drive. Right. And I'm like, like I'm a little bit early, but I'm not like, I turn back and yeah, so I, I look, I literally look down. I had to get gas oh, no. and I looked down on my feet. I was wearing two different pairs of shoes. Beautiful. So I was wearing a, a black shoe and yeah. a brown shoe. Yeah. Totally different. And yeah. I'm like, oh my God, this person is going to leave me in charge of a building. I can't even wear <laughs> matching shoes. <laughs> and so, and so like, and so I actually, he like, yeah, I just, I, I walked in there and I said, before you say anything, before you say anything, I just want to acknowledge that I'm wearing two different pairs of shoes. Cause I was very nervous. And she like, she always, she, every time, like I see her to this day, she'll say, Hey, you got the matching shoes today? Like she remembered uh, yeah. that too, right? And it's yeah. just like, I was like, ah, uh, but she, you know, it was, she obviously, you know, I got the job and but it's, I was like, it's, it's yeah, funny because, because maybe, maybe had you not mentioned it, she wouldn't even, even notice that maybe, you know, no, I know, but or I she would have, and she would have said, I like how he, how he rolls. <laughs> yeah. You he's know, a, he's an innovative thinker. Yeah. Why wear one pair of shoes when you can wear two different ones, right? So now let's go back. Let's go back yeah. to the beginning of your career, right? Yeah. So you have a lot of great experiences and obviously, you yeah. know, a lot of great people that have come across in, in your teaching career. Who's an, it, uh, when you look back at your teaching career and you can go back to talk to Joel in the first year of teaching, yeah. what advice yeah. would you give to yourself and why? Oh my goodness. It's, it's very easy. 
the advice that I would give myself is to uh, is to invest myself in myself intentionally to grow myself. Right. And not just career wise, because I did that. Right. Like like, you know, I started teaching. I had a plan. Uh, I had big ideas. So I knew I wanted to put in about 10 years and then become principal. And then after that, we'll go from there. Right. Mm -hmm. So I did nine years in the classroom and then I got my first gig as principal. So you have to upgrade to do that. Right. You like take courses yep. in your principal's right, right. qualification. Right. So. That was fine, but but not only in that sense. So you got the academic sense; it's one way. But I'm like I'm talking just developing yourself, your your vision as a leader, developing, you know, um, it really intentionally, you know, discovering how do I, you know, how do I want people to perceive me, and how do I want to go about to develop my relationships? What kind of relationships do I want to have with people? Right. Uh, what do I want to leave behind as a as a legacy? Right. So if I were to go back to myself in 1997, which is the year I started teaching. I would say, you know, start reading books now. Start, yeah. you know, there wasn't Twitter back then, right? So, right, yeah, no, there wasn't any any of that. So, but just start connecting, start finding those connections, start reading books. You know, uh, people like John Maxwell. You mm -hmm. know, he's probably my favorite my favorite leadership guru to read, and and a lot of the stuff that he that he says and teaches hits home for me. But just be because. Having having gone through the journey now, the journey that I did go through and discovering it, it just changed the whole game for me. It changed the whole thing. Mm. When I discovered, okay, I got to invest in myself because if I don't have anything to give, then what good is that to other people? And that's why I'm on earth, right? I'm, I'm on earth because I want to give. Mm. Uh, so to give, I want to be the best version of myself because I know if I give, I get in return. So it's, it's, it's a two-way street. And that goes with in my relationship with my wife, with my kids in a job that I want to do because it all mm -hmm. comes down to what do I want to, what do I want to leave behind? Right. So I want to reach as many people as I can and help them as much as I can. And what do I need to do to get to a point where I'm able to do that and just continually do it and continually be a source of inspiration to myself and to be able mm -hmm. to connect with people so that they can also add value to me. You know, just like this conversation right. we're having now, George, it's like, it's a huge learning, learning opportunity for me because you're getting me to think about different things. And so, in turn, how am I going to be able to take this experience here with you, this podcast episode, and be able to reapply it right. and, and give to others? So that would be the advice. Start reading, you know, books on, you know, how to how to discover what you want in life, how to be intentional. Uh, what is leadership? What does it mean to you? What does growth mean to you? And where do you need to grow? And to be intentional about it, putting it in my calendar, paper calendar back then, you know, the cell phones were just starting to come out. <laughs> And uh, you put you, it in there. You taught, you taught in the olden days. No Twitter, no phones. no Twitter, no nothing, no right. Facebook, right? Just and like, and and cells. They were still like the big ones, like the like <laughs> like, like the satellite cells right. in the cars. Right. The big, the giant ones with the yeah the yeah. polar thing. Yeah, and all that stuff, yeah, right? yeah. But, so you know, connecting was different, right? You had to do it in a different way, and so that would be the, we're the, the same age, right? Is that, I'm just joking, right? Obviously, yeah, I, know, I know, I know. So the so you know, okay. This is the last thing I'm gonna share because. We could probably go on forever about this stuff, and we got to probably. record another podcast here yeah. too. Yeah. So this is really timely thinking that you shared here. So um, I just finished the um, because of a teacher too, and it's focused mm -hmm. on the first year as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And the editor actually made this comment, basically saying like, because I was like saying like, hey, like we need to continue to grow, blah blah blah. And they they made a comment that saying like, do you really want to push teachers to like you know? better themselves after a pandemic i'm like yes i do well yeah. because because if you if you think that like it actually is the most important time to grow is when you struggle right so exactly. like it's kind of like it's kind of like you know you mentioned my weight loss and stuff like that yeah the days that it's most important to to do it are the days you don't want to right yeah, yeah. that's yeah, that's yeah. what separates people yeah and so it's not that you can't have like there's days where we're, yes we're trying to survive we're trying to get through yeah. the day. I understand yeah. that. But if you, but th the thing is, is that that's where you learn some of the most important lessons is, is through adversity, through struggle. And so I'm like, yeah, leave it in. Like, this is important to me. And if someone says in education, um, no, I don't think growing is important. I struggle with that because it's like, do we give our kids, you know, like, oh, don't worry. You know, and then what is what does that set up a kid for? It's like, contradictory, right? To what we right. say and what we do, and then we say, and it's amazing because uh, you know, uh, as a principal, one of the things that I would do with staff is uh, being being a certified leadership coach as well with my 
with mm-hmm. my consulting business is I would, I would offer them like one-on-one coaching set, just meetings, right. right? Like maybe once every two weeks, half an hour or whatever. And, it, and, and I think the thing that, that struck me the most was that we would talk about professional development and making the time. Right. And I would tell them, I said, listen, you know, I'm ready to buy you a book. I'll buy you a book to read through the school budget. Right. Yeah. And then, but, but, but the deal is, is that I'll buy it for you and it's yours. You can keep it. You can scribble in it, whatever you want to do with it after. But when we meet, we, you have to talk about it. You have to yeah. talk to me about what you, right. What you took back. And it's, it's unbelievable, George, how many teachers would say a comment in the lines of, well, when am I going to read this? Well, I said, right. well, you have prep times, right? You come in in the morning, you, right. your kids are gone at the end of the day. I said, just schedule it in during a prep timer. And, and they were surprised. They thought that they weren't allowed. Oh, to, wow. To, yeah. to, to do that during, and it's like, this is ridiculous. You know, yeah. like you, you got to keep growing. It's so important. And it's, that's the first thing that, that, that we do in our school district when it comes to uh, workshops and when it comes to training is there's always a piece where we talk about growth and the importance of it and right. the importance of making time. Because too many people still don't do it in education. They don't make the time and they don't see it as right. a priority. So they, they stay stuck in these, in these patterns and they're just recurring, recurring. And coming back to what you said about you know, should we be asking teachers to better themselves after a pandemic? Well, yeah, because what are we going to do now? We're just going to keep saying, well, you know, it was tough and it was tough. A lot of people had hard course, times course. and lost, you know, we lost lives. And, but are we, by, by, by thinking like that, are we creating this right. new loop, right? This new cycle where we're just, it becomes an excuse yeah. and we stay in, in action. Yeah. There's, there's, there's opportunities right? to, to create what we always wanted to in education, what we aspired to when we first started. So exactly. Well, we got, we got to, we got to cut yeah. it short. Right. We, this is like the longest three questions I've ever done. But <laughs> Hey, it was, I loved your ideas, loved your thoughts. And so awesome. I'm looking forward to people hearing it and Joel, I'm looking forward to talking to you to, uh, more today. So thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks everyone thanks. for listening.